Uh, so today we are going to discuss about uh, Kernaghan's phenomena. So uh, to understand this, we should understand uh, uh, what is the principle behind uh, behind the presentation. How is this happening? So uh, first, uh, the most common reason for Kernaghan's phenomena is uh, epidural hematoma, which accumulates between the skull here. So we which accumulates between the skull and the dura mater and which is going to compress the surrounding brain parenchyma. When this happens, uh, it is going to uh, push the soft tissue to the contralateral side uh, so and herniates to the area of least resistance. So the first area is below the uh, falcine. So this is called subfalcine herniation. The other one is uh, below the tentorium. So that's the reason we call as transtentorial herniation. And the other one is central herniation, which is herniation of the brainstem downwards. And the third one, uh, and the fourth one is the herniation of the cerebral lot tonsils. Now, uh, what Karnohans, uh, what Karno, so Karnohan says is, when this epidural hematoma is accumulated uh, in the topmost layer and pushes as uh, fluids are non-compressible, uh, the, the brain parenchyma is uh, trying to go to the area of least resistance as I have told earlier. So when this happens, uh, the the medial temporal part, the uncle, the uncle part will try to uh, try to uh, try to go and compress the brainstem here. When this compresses here, uh, when that compresses the brainstem, and we have structures uh, which are already located over there and the most common structures over there is if we can see here it's already written so it is the third cranium oculomotor and the arterial supply which is posterior cerebral artery so when when third cranial now is affected over that side we uh, we have something called as we have fixed fixed eyes and we have dilated pupil so why do we have fixed eyes you uh, we can understand this because third cranial now uh, gives almost all except uh, superior uh, oblique which is given by fourth cranial now and lateral rectus by sixth cranial now as uh, the famous mnemonic is s44 and lr6 and the remaining all the extraocular muscles will be three so superior oblique takes the eyeball down uh, this is the eyeball so, superior oblique will take the eyeball down and lateral rectus takes it laterally abduction so uh, uh, you can see the resultant rectus will be down and out so uh, that's the reason and oculomotor now uh, oculomotor nerves outermost layers have parasympathetic uh, parasympathetic uh, nerves uh, which are coming from the uh, ciliary ganglion uh, which again are given by uh, edinger west for nucleus so that's the reason we have fixed eyes in the direction of uh, down and out down and out and we have dilated pupils now uh, this is due to compression of third cranial now and when there is compression of posterior cerebral artery so we have something called as cortical blindness because the posterior cerebral artery is actually uh, giving to the occipital lobes and that results in contralateral uh, uh, that leads to contralateral hemianopia.
と思います。エミアノピア、with the macular sparing。because、uh, we have a collateral supply there。So、which results in、uh, sparing of、uh, macula. Now,、uh, this is the、uh, second structure which is going to, be, uh, uh, going to be affected. And the third most important thing to understand in Karma Hans phenomena is、uh, the brainstem. It's not the brainstem actually which is getting compressed, but it is the cerebral peduncle. So, cerebral peduncle, the ipsilateral cerebral peduncle. Ipsilateral cerebral peduncle. So、uh, I, have, uh, I have already uh, uh, took a picture and I want to show you that、uh, this is the cortico、uh, spinal tract because the signals are going from the cortex to the spine. And、um, cortico spinal tracts,、uh, you can see it is going through the internal capsule here, which is not shown, and it is going to go. Through the cerebral peduncle,、uh, and then it is going to decussate at the middle of longata and go down, and which is going to uh, uh, all the motor supply to the,、uh, the, the contralateral part, both the upper limbs,、uh, hand, and the leg. So,、uh, same, same manner, we have the, the other side which is going to give motor supply to the Uh, the contralateral rim, which is on the right side. Now, whenever there is、uh, uncle herniation, uncle herniation is going to affect this part. So, when this part is affected, the,、uh, the contralateral parts are not going to get the motor supply, which is, which is not going to get the motor supply. And、uh, the part which is, we, we can understand here, we can. So, so, this uncle herniation is uh, uh, actually hindering the signals, cortico spinal tract, which is going through this and decussating in the middle of long data to the contralateral side. So, this results in contralateral. Let me please share. So,、uh, this results in contralateral hemiplegia. So, ipsilateral cerebral peduncle is、uh, compressed, which results in, as I told, contralateral, contralateral hemiplegia. Now,、uh, we have、uh, something called as.、Uh, Uh, we, ha we have further explanation for this,、uh, which is called k a r n o h a n s notch phenomenon. So, what it says is、uh, when this compression happens over this area,、uh, so Uh, this uh, and what k a r n o h a n says is this tentorium,、uh, this tentorium is very rigid structure and、uh, it is compressed against the soft tissue of the brain parenchyma. So, whenever there is epidural hematoma pushing this brain parenchyma here, so which results in、uh, herniation of the uncle、uh, through, the, uh, through the transtentorial pathway and compressing in the brain stem. Cerebral peduncle,、uh, which when that happens,、uh, the ipsilateral, uh, this uh, uh, cortico spinal tract, which is on the contralateral side, which decussates through the uh, uh, middle of long data and goes to the same,、uh, the same side where the epidural hematoma is there, gets compressed due to this uncle herniation because the pressure. So, which is actually、uh, the quite paradox of what we have learned now. So, this, the first thing which I have、uh, told you was which happens early on. 
and when you leave the uh, epidural hematoma then it is going to uh, actually result in uh, Cornohan's notch phenomena which results in uh, compression of compression of contralateral cerebral peduncle resulting in ipsilateral because the you can see the the the, ep, uh, the epidural hematoma where it is present we are getting hemiplegia on the same side so this is not because of uh, this is not because of the the herniation ankle herniation itself but it is because of uh, the pathway affected be, uh, by the rigid uh, tentorial uh, notch uh, which is uh, which is actually uh, killing of the pathway on the uh, contralateral side so it is ipsy ipsilateral ipsilateral uh, hemiplegia which happens at the which happens at the later stages So this is called Cornohan's notch phenomena, and the notch which they are saying is actually transtentorial notch. Thank you.